Hey everybody, welcome back to Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One. It's time for my November vlog style video. I can't believe it, November already. The holidays are going to be upon us. It just seems like this whole year, some of the days just seem to crawl by. Uh, because we're really limiting our exposure to to others, you know, crowds and different things like that, shopping. Um, but the months have just really flown by. I've tried to stay busy. I hope you have too. And we will get through this. So today we're going to talk about my Vegas vacation. My husband and I went to Vegas a couple of weeks ago, so I want to talk with you about that. I want to talk with you about a couple of set changes that I have made for my videos. And uh, we're gonna talk about my sneaker obsession. <laughs> this is something new. And I wanna share with you my eye look that I have on today, the different eye makeup that I'm wearing. So many of you ask me a lot of the time what I'm wearing. I kind of shook it up a little bit uh, today, so I thought I might share all of this coming up. I have a lot to cover today. Uh, plus, I have some plans made for this afternoon, so I thought I would get busy early this morning. I am such an early person. Some of you that have commented on my videos, um, I have responded like at 4 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock in the morning, and these are regular times for me to get up. So here in Ohio, we went back to standard time from our daylight savings time. The time change continues to get really hard for me. Uh, the older I get, the more I'm in tune with the circadian rhythms, you know, the, the light and the dark. And these time changes can really be tough for me to get used to. It takes me about two weeks to get used to it. This one is the worst in the fall because you fall back an hour. And I'm early to bed, early to rise uh, in, on any occasion. So I find myself at six o'clock at night just sort of nodding off on the couch. I just can't keep my eyes open. I just get up, I walk around, I have a glass of ice water, you know, whatever it takes to keep me, to keep me up and awake. Uh, so that I can manage to adjust to this time change. I don't know how you feel about it. There was a, there was a house bill that was put up um, to abolish the time change and just stay with daylight savings time all year round. I'm like, hallelujah. Um, they formed a committee and they were ready to take it to vote. And then the pandemic hit this year. So maybe, maybe sometime in the future, we'll get rid of this time change. I'm not sure what benefit it has anymore, but it really can do a number on, um, on our health. I think a lot of people are more sensitive to this. So let's talk about my vacation to Las Vegas. My husband and I decided to go on this vacation. I talked about this in October vlog that we had had those plans made for a really long time. And we just kept kind of keeping it on the back burner. And we finally decided we were two weeks out that we could cancel this or we could go. And we made the decision to go. And I'm really glad that we did. We were able to go. We were able to uh, have a little bit of a getaway vacation and still be responsible at the same time. We kind of measured our risk and felt that it was a good risk to take. Uh, there were a lot of things that were different about this vacation than there than it was in the past. You know, obviously, um, we had to wear masks the entire time, which I'm a fan of it. I'm glad. I want them all wear a mask, and I want you to wear one too. And masks were something that I felt um, I felt were very necessary. But I'm not used to wearing a mask for 12 hours a day. Um, I'm used to wearing a mask just to run out to do a quick necessary errand and back home. You know, that's it. Um, and so what I found out was that by wearing this mask, that it creates a lot of uh, moisture around your mouth area and nose area. And then the process of taking it down and putting it up to drink, to eat, to go in and out of buildings, I, I became very chafed right around my mouth area my nose and my mouth. So that first week when I came home, um, I put lotion on things, but you know, it was just peeling like mad uh, that first week. So it's a little bit better now. Um, I'm back to my normal routine. So I took, um, I took about six or seven wigs with me. I, I lost count. <laughs> now my intention was that I would wear each of them. 
Uh, the reality is that I did not wear the longer styles as much. I got very weary of them very quickly just because of the mask issue. When you've got a ton of hair on your head and then you've got your glasses, your sunglasses walking around, then you have a mask on, you just feel like you're all covered up like in, I'm in a potato sack or something trying to see and all this kind of thing. So uh, long hair was not real practical for this trip. Um, I packed several wigs and I wore some more than others. Now what I'm wearing now is the Big Time by Raquel Welch in the color Shaded Biscuit RL 1923 SS. I love, love, love this style. Just love it. Um, it's flirty, it's carefree, it's not uh, sh too short, it's not too long. It always looks super cute. And I did wear this one all day. So I'm actually going to show you all of the wigs that I took to Las Vegas with me, but I'm going to do a separate video for that because it just, it's too long for me to fit within this compilation and kind of keep the time down on this vlog. So I think that the reason why this worked out so well is because this little mid-length shaggy style is very tuckable. And when you can remove the bulk of the hair to behind the ear, leaving some out for coverage and then hook those, uh, you know, hook those elastic pieces behind the ear for the mask. It was very comfortable. It looked fine. Um, the coverage was still good and I didn't feel like I had all of this around my face. So it really did turn out very nicely. So this fall is the fall for my obsession with sneaker style booties. Oh my gosh, I have three pair of these now and I generally don't do that. But in this case, the third pair came when I was in Las Vegas. Uh, footwear was a problem for me there. We walked seven to 10 miles. My husband had a Fitbit on so he could tell us at the end of the day, you know, how much ground we covered. <laughs> we did a lot of walking and he and I are both very active and fit anyway. Uh, we do a lot of trail running together. And so that was a highlight of our vacation is that we got to get out and walk and and get fresh air and just enjoy the sights and things. But what ended up, ended up happening is the shoes that I took with me kind of wore a little blister on my foot. And I'm like, uh-oh, um, I'm gonna have to get a new pair of shoes. <laughs> and you know, the, the old saying at the crap table is, come on, daddy needs a new pair of shoes. Well, mommy needed a new pair of shoes. And this just gave me an excuse to buy yet another pair of these, uh, these little sneaker booties. So what it is, is uh, like a high top sneaker, but there is a hidden wedge inside. Um, there's like a one to one and a half inch platform, and then on that is a one inch heel. So about a two inch total heel height on these, and it's completely hidden, not visible from the outside. So it just looks like a flat sneaker. Um, these are gorgeous. Now this one is Steve Madden. I purchased this pair when we were in Las Vegas. There was a DSW right on the strip. You actually go down in the basement and it was the whole warehouse effect there. Uh, but I found these, fell in love with them because I already had a pair of gray ones and I had a pair of winter ones here. I'll show you. So here's the ones that I got for winter, little sneaker wedge booties with a little bit of a Sherpa cuff on them. And these are gorgeous and so, so comfortable. They've got that built-in little bit of a wedge there. Now these are, um, I got these on Amazon for $36. I'm gonna post the links below in case you're interested. I thought it was a really good price because let me tell you, these and these gray ones that I have on my feet are identical. The only thing that's different is one has a Steve Madden tag in it and was sold at DSW. The other one has an off-brand tag in it and it was sold on Amazon. And these were $69 at DSW and I paid $30, $38 for the, the kind of whatever brand was being sold on Amazon and I'll put the link. So now I have three um, and I, I do love them. My legs are so doggone short that I need a little bit of length. And these are perfect. It keeps me casual. Um, it's super, super comfortable. They're very, very, very comfortable to wear. Uh, they've got a nice cushion in them. You don't even know there's a heel. Um, but anyway, I just, I just can't get enough of my little booty obsession. I call them booties, but they're actually wedged uh, sneakers. 
Anyway, I bought these at Vegas. I was good for the rest of the trip. I so something really fun happened to me in Las Vegas. Uh, my new nickname is the Buffalo Slayer. <laughs> I won a jackpot on a penny slot machine when I was out there. I am not a big gambler. I enjoy going into the casinos. I love looking at them from the outside and walking the strip in Las Vegas is so much fun. Um, my husband and I stopped into a casino when we were on the strip and um, he sat down to a machine that he wanted to play and put $20 in. So we each took a $20 bill and we put it in and that's usually it. Once it's gone, it's gone um, and we move on. But um, he was winning a little bit. I went through my $20 like right away. I don't think I won anything in $20 worth of spins on this slot machine. And so I'm just sitting there after my money was done because I wasn't about to put more money in this machine, right? Um, that's been taking all my money. And so my husband is still up there, you know, with his, he's doing well. And he says, here, put another $20 bill. And I said, are you sure? They said, this machine has just eaten my money like nothing, like it was water. And he says, uh, he says, yes, go ahead and do that because I'm going to be here for a little while. I'm like, oh, okay. So I put it in. Proceeded to hit the button on like the third spin on that that new $20 bill I put in there. Um, the bells and whistles started going and I looked at the I looked at the the game board and you know I guess I was expecting maybe a couple hundred dollars. It was nineteen hundred dollars. One thousand nine hundred twenty dollar jackpot. <laughs> It's hilarious because this happens. I always win the jackpots, but I'm the one that's always like, yeah, let's go. We don't want to put more money in these machines. Um, I'm always the conservative one, you know, when it comes to that. But, oh my gosh, what a shock and surprise that was. Like, everybody was kind of crowded around looking. I mean, it's not the biggest jackpot in the world. But when you're you play in a penny machine for 50 cents a, a bet, um, that's a big deal. That is a huge win. So all these buffaloes, and I'm going to put some, some clips up here. You'll see. So I'll put a picture of the game board when I won and then some of the action that I saw. And then I had, uh, I had to pay tax on this money. So they they, they had to come out and do a hand pay, of course, you know, because it was over a certain amount. So you'll see that they paid me a hundred dollar bills, like 19 $100 bills and one $20 bill. And then they gave me a W-2 and said, get out. <laughs> no, no, they wanted me to continue to play and put all that money back in the machine. Um, they were super nice. And I'm just like, yeah, let's get out of here because that actually paid paid for our trip. I was so excited. Um, so we came home and we saved enough of that back. I just set it aside so I could pay tax on it when tax time comes around. So that was exciting. Okay, so let's move on and talk about something different on my set. You'll notice there's actually a couple of things. Uh, the first thing is I got a new iPad. Uh, I upgraded from my old iPad Pro, which was a 2017, to uh, a brand new one, which is the, the latest model, whatever it is, 2020. Um, and the camera was supposed to be a little bit better. And so I'm always looking for a better experience for all of you. Um, I've learned how to work with the, the camera to bring in as much light as I possibly can without kind of gl glaring out. Um, a lot of the details. So I hope this is a good experience for you. It's the biggest challenge we have as wig reviewers. Um, but the other good news is I've had so many requests. This is one of my top requests over the years is to label what wigs are on the shelves in the back. That is absolutely impossible. I'll tell you why, because I switch these out quite often. And I can't be constantly, you know, doing things like that um, to prepare for the wig reviews. It takes me a couple of hours to prepare for a wig review anyway, if I'm going to film, you know, setting all of it up, the lights, the camera. Um, I have to, I have to use this room. So I have to tear this down every single time I film. So it's not feasible for me to label all of these back here. I wish I could. 
but it just is not a good use of my time. So I came up with a solution. So you'll, you'll see back here that each one of these mannequin heads has a letter on it. They might not always be in alphabetical order, um, but you'll see that each has a letter. And that way, if you have a question about a certain wig style, you can identify that in your comment. You can say, hey, I'm looking at the letter F, Taz, that looks like it's cool. Um, I'd like that to, to see what that is because I might like it for myself. And I can respond. I do my very best to respond to all comments. This channel is just growing beyond my wildest dreams. And so that means a lot more comments on you know hundreds of videos. So every day I can go through hundreds of comments and try to help the best that I can. But this may help me easily identify um, what wig you're looking at and be able to share that with you. So I hope you appreciate and enjoy this little bit of a change in my set because I wanna share my collection with you. Um, that has also been my biggest challenge in terms of a set and the lighting and things is because I don't have just a solid background behind me. If I did, it would be very easy to dial in that lighting because it's a static kind of, of a, a shallow set. But when you're talking about, you know, these, these wig shelves here are, you know, a good eight feet behind the camera, you want to be able to see both my face and what's in the back. And that's not a small task for a camera because typically it'll track your face and, and be able to provide some lighting around that while darkening other areas. Um, so I feel like this, this camera does a really good job on that and I hope you enjoy the upgrade. So another thing I want to address, most of you are so kind and gracious about this and you do understand if you've been with me for a long time and I'm just getting a lot of complaints about me not being, not doing more brunettes or more reds. And I am very kind and compassionate. I want to provide as much detail as I possibly can, as much variety as I possibly can in my lineup of reviews. But the fact is I'm blonde. I like and enjoy blonde wigs the best. That's what I identify with. That's what I wear the most. And when I'm spending lots of my own money on these wigs to review, I buy most of the wigs that I review. Um, I have some sent to me from Wig Studio One, but for the most part, I buy most of them. I am going to buy colors and styles that I think I might enjoy and wear, not just buy them to review them and then try to sell them and lose money. That just isn't a very, that just doesn't make much common sense, does it? So here's the solution for that. I am going to continue to provide as much variety as I possibly can, including some brunettes and reds mixed in with my blondes. But if you are a brunette and you really can't visualize a darker color, um, a brown or a red, when I'm showing you a blonde wig, then I would urge you to go out and find reviewers that are reviewing mostly the color that you like. Um, Wig Studio One YouTube channel, please subscribe. We have a variety, we have so much variety, more variety than any other YouTube channel out there right now that does wig reviews. There's blondes, there's reds, there's brunettes. Um, we actually enlist the help of some guest reviewers that do kind of certain color families as well, reds or brunettes. So they're all contributing to this channel. We've got different face shapes, colors. You will not be disappointed with all of the variety that you can get with the Wig Studio One YouTube channel. So I will link that below. Go out, subscribe, and enjoy, knowing that I'm just not gonna be able to please everyone with the choices that I make to do with reviews. I also have some beautiful styles coming uh, from across the pond. You know me, I'm always looking at different uh, styles from other brands and things. So about twice a year, I order wigs from continentalwigs.com because they carry Belmadam products. And I am crazy about Belmadam wigs. So I have a couple coming that I purchased. And once they get here, I will put up a review. 
Okay, I know I've gone long and I'm sorry for that. I probably could have done two separate vlog videos this month, but I do wanna share with you an eye look. I got all my things out so that I could share with you. So often you ask me about my eyeshadow or you know what kind of lashes I use, you know what kind of eyeshadow palettes and so forth. And I'm always happy to share that with you, but the truth of the matter is I kind of stick to one thing all of the time. My very favorite palette has been the Tarte Blooming Blooms 2 or Blooming 2 palette. Um, I got that at Ulta a while back. I've been using it ever since and I absolutely love it. And when I love something, I feel like, why change, right? But once in a while, I get a little urge to do something different. I'm not really interested in makeup enough that I need to catch all of those videos, but Nisha and Jill, much love and appreciation. So this is a NARS Suede palette. Uh, it has one, two, three, four, it has six, six different colors in it. They're all neutrals. And I absolutely loved it. And when I looked at it at Ulta, I'm like, yeah, I could really, really work with these colors. I'm more into neutrals uh, and nudes, as you know. So um, I bought this palette and I've been enjoying it a lot. So what you'll see on me today is you'll see this uh, dark color down here in my crease and on the corner. Okay, now the all over shade that I'm using is this one up here. It has a little bit of metallic look to it, a little bit of shimmer. So this is more of a matte, this is more of a shimmer, okay? And then there's another shimmer over here that's kind of a nude flesh pink tone, and I use that in the uh, inner corner, okay? So what you'll see then is the outer corner, all over the main lid, and then the inner corner, all right? But you're gonna say, wow, there's, it just looks like there's something else. And you would be right. So I found the other day, I was at Walmart just browsing and they had this tower of e.l.f. products. Um, I practically ran into it with my cart. And I'm like, oh, well that looks cool. Let me check it out. So I ended up purchasing this. Um, I like, especially in the winter time, well, I love coppers in, included with the nudes, but I also like a little bit of glittery look to it. And I gotta get up my glasses here because I can barely see. This is called Copper Pop. Copper Pop, it is uh, an eyeshadow, okay? And it's a little bit of a soft wand. You can see how glittery it is. And I thought, wow. That looks perfect for what I am going for um, because sometimes you don't get enough of that metallic look on just a basic one application um, eyeshadow. So in addition to my NARS suede look, I went all over the main body of the lid with this Copper Pop by e.l.f. So let me explain what I did. I first applied it and it's, it, it's very watery, but it dries quickly. It doesn't offer much color at all. Um, it just adds a little bit of, of the metallic glitter to the lid. Okay, you can see. I mean, that's a, I'm really putting that on there pretty thickly and I've already, I already had one coat on already but it just adds a little bit of pop to the lid. And I think this would be an amazing holiday look, don't you? You could pair this with any of your other palettes. Um, just as kind of like, think of it as a top coat, just a, an extra little bit of like an exclamation point on your sentence. So that is the eye look that I've had on a couple different times and I really thought, I liked it well enough to share it with you. So let me talk to you about the other products that I have on my eyes because I know you're probably gonna ask. So maybe one of these days, I will get brave enough to do a get ready with me kind of a thing. Um, the ladies that are really good at that have practiced it for a really long time. And I just have a feeling, cause I'll get up in the mirror and I'm making, mm, making all of these weird faces and stuff, you know, so. I just feel like, like I would look like a big clown and nobody would get anything from it. Um, but maybe one day I will. 
Um, so what I do is I just start with my nude eye there and I start with this eyeliner. This is the Ulta Beauty Cream Eyeliner in Cup of Joe. It's a big, thick, emollient, creamy type of application. I go all over the upper lash line and below uh, the eye. And then, uh, that's so that's the first thing that I do. Um, now, I will take a felt liner, a fine tip felt liner, and I'll go the inner corner because I feel like I need a little bit more definition in that area and it helps my lashes look more seamless. So I'll go into the inner corner with this. I don't wanna do it with the thicker one because that would leave it not such a clean look. And I use a variety of brushes for my eyes. So the first thing is this thin brush here and that's where I will, uh, I'll go in and do the corner, the outer V and I will stretch that back into the crease, okay? And I start with that. And then I use this brush here uh, for the main color. So that's the next thing I do. I dab on the main lid, the main color for that. And then what I do is I take this brush here. This is a an e.l.f. And I mean, it's not a smudge type brush, but it does help me blend and smoke out the corners of the eyes and through the crease. It gives me a nice clean look. I've got a lot of crepey skin up there. Um, at 52 years old, you're gonna have some bags and sags up in there. So um, my friend Babs would call it fluffy skin. <laughs> now, luckily I have more of a, a, a medium to deep set eye. So I don't get a lot of the droopiness, but it is very crepey and it's difficult to get a nice clean look with crepey skin. So, you know, I could just go up there and smoke it out a little bit on the corner and in the crease. And then what I do is I take a thinner brush like this and then that's where I dip it into the inner corner color. And then when I do my inner corner, I stretch it all the way from here, all throughout the inner corner, and then I blend it into the crease. So that makes it a nice ombre transition from the inner corner to the outer corner, okay? I just got a new mascara. Mascara has been a bit of a thing. So I, I really, really like the um, Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara, but sometimes it's just, it's just too goopy to work with and it gets clumpy and so forth. So I've been looking in, but then you know what? Some of the other ones that uh, are, they more, they're more separated. You gotta put on tons and tons of layers on it. I found one that I really like. It was on sale at Ulta. And this one is called, um, it's It Cosmetics Superhero. I did have to put two applications in because the brush is very thin. It applies just a thin coat. It really separates and extends the lashes. So I felt like I needed two coats. Um, so I'll put a coat on and then I'll wait for a little bit and then I'll go into the corners with the end and just bring up the corner lashes a little bit. Um, but I feel like this one worked out very well. It gave me the volume that I wanted with two coats. Um, it's not too dry, um, but it does extend the lashes and really prepares them nicely for um, my false lashes. Now, I don't wear false lashes at any other time than when I do my videos because somehow when you're doing the videos, it just your eyes just disappear, everything kind of melds together. You can't get that high definition like you do in real life. So I wear lashes just so you can get a sense of face shape and things like that. Um, but, so after all of that then, I follow up lastly with these Ardell lashes. These, I don't, you know, I don't even know what the name of them are, but they're number 120, black. These have been my favorite ones, and I've been on these for quite a while. They're very natural looking. I have to always trim the inner corner, um, but they're very natural looking. They feel great on. They've got enough curvature to them, so you're not working with a thick lash that really just doesn't want to stick. And I wear these and wear these and wear these. I'm ashamed to tell you how many times I've wore the last pair. I just opened a new pair today, um, but the first ones that I used, I had them for like a good month and I probably wore them twice a week. 
So probably eight to 10 wears from them. So awesome, awesome product. Love these little lashes. So I guess I don't have to be a complete makeup guru or an expert to be able to share some of these things with you. Something that works for me, something that I'm excited about as a reviewer, as a YouTuber. Sometimes we just wanna talk about things that excite us. Um, because we're always thinking about what the audience might like, that it's just sometimes fun and casual to, to share something personal with you. Okay, I know my I have ran on and on and on. Be sure to catch my upcoming Vegas Wigs uh, video. I'm gonna take you through T TSA. Um, we're, I'm gonna talk about the experience. I'm gonna show you all the wigs that I took and some photographs from the vacation. So. We'll talk with you soon. Thanks again, guys. Love to all. Bye.